All right. Can everyone hear me now? Can everyone hear me now? I'm good. Hear me. Can you hear me? Last, last call. <laughs> can everyone hear me? All right. Today is going to be a heart activation. And one last thing, um, Luca and everybody else, you guys can tell me what looks best for you guys. Um, if you're on the phone, it could be easier. I mean, okay. If you're on the phone, could it be easier to see full screen? Is this good for you? If you're on the phone, but for the PCs, is this good for you? Let me know, because I am trying to record this class. So which one's good? for the PC or the phone. All right, the last little roll call. First one. Okay. First one. Cool. All right. Starting class. All right. Today is we're gonna be getting high off our breath and we're gonna be getting high and meditating together. And today is gonna to be a heart activation. I did promise a heart activation last Saturday and I'm fulfilling it this Saturday. I told you guys last Saturday about this class and it's gonna be very heart centered. All right. So everyone find themselves in a good seated posture, whether it be cross-legged or sitting on your toes whichever one you prefer, but I would say go with the one that's more comfortable. And if you do want to be like me sometimes and go to where, where, where it's more painful at, you can do that as well. Um, I'm going to sit like this. I recommend if you want to sit cross-legged, sit cross-legged. It doesn't really matter. All right. So first thing we're going to do is some cat cows to lubricate our spine. Some cat cows to lubricate our spine and align to the divine. All right, so for our cat cows, inhale, it's gonna look like this. Inhale, chest up, exhale, roll your chest back. All right, inhale with your nose. Let's keep this going. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. Halfway. In with peace, out with stress. Keep it circular. No pauses. I'm gonna pick it up to speed. Last 10, 10, 9, 8, 7, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Take a deep breath in. Hold. Exhale. Hold your breath. Nowhere needed. Feel. Become aware of your body. Feel your heartbeat. Slow it down and just be in this moment. You're in a safe space now. In three, two, one, recovery breath in and return to normal breathing. All right. That was our first aligning breath work, but this is not. The breath work per se is this is the 
spinal lubrication. So our breath work is more situated towards our needs. Right now, we're just lubricating our spine. So right now, we're going to be moving side to side. So we're going to lift in one shoulder and drop another shoulder. So lift up like this. So we're going to do that with our breath, following our nose. Inhale, raise your shoulder, exhale, drop it down, switch side. Inhale, exhale, 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 inhale, exhale. Keep it going. You got this. It's like a little dance for your spine and your shoulders. You're going to pick up the pace. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four. Give it all you got. Three, two, one. For the end, hold it to your belly. Push your belly out. Push your belly out. Push your belly out. And hold. And exhale. Relax. Feel, become aware of your body. If you feel your heartbeat, if you feel your body temperature changing, or you feel tingling sensations, that's okay. You're in a safe space now. Remember to smile. In three, two, one. Recovery breath in. <sighs> Return to your normal breathing. All right, our last spinal lubrication is going to be Sufi grind. So if anybody's not familiar, I'm going to let you get a little bit adjusted real quick. This is a wake up to your spine, aligning to the divine within you. All right, now we're going to start Sufi grind. So Sufi grind is a circle motion with your spine. So inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, two, inhale, exhale, three, inhale, exhale. Make sure you open your chest up. Inhale, exhale, heart center. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. Exhale. This is only the beginning of the practice. Put effort in here, but you don't have to go all out. Just feel lubricating your spine, making our breath work more aligned to seek the divinity inside. Keep breathing. Exhale. Inhale. Chest open. Exhale. Curl it back. Inhale. Merging your breath with your movement. Feel the sensation. <sighs> Keep breathing. And now switch sides. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, exhale. You're doing great. Exhale. Inhale, exhale. Inhale, chest open, exhale, curl it back. Inhale, chest open, exhale, curl it back. Remember to open up your, your neck on these curls. On these turns, you can open up your spine, your neck, your shoulder blades, your heart. Five, four, three, two, 
five, four, three, two, one. Take a full breath in. Suck some more air through your mouth. And hold. Keep holding center energy, energy up, center energy up, center energy up. And exhale. Keep exhaling. Return to your normal breathing. Feel. Do you feel your body temperature changing? Do you feel tingly sensations? That is okay. You're in a safe space now. Do not hold your emotion. Let them flow through you. One thing I like to say is, I don't allow the birds of sadness and sorrow to lay a nest in my mind. I let them be free and flow through me. Let the emotions be free and let them flow through you. No pauses between inhalation and exhalation. The breath becomes one. No pause. Nowhere to go. Be here now in the present. All right, All right now for our spinal lubrication. Now let's get to the breath work that rules the nation. All right. So, so Luca, your question was nose in and out. Yes, it was nose in and out, but you can use your mouth too. I like only using my mouth for exhales. I do not like using my my mouth for inhales most of the time. I like using my mouth for exhales. It's good for expelling gas. Our nose is designed to breathe. All right. All right, now we're gonna be going to our heart-centered practice today. And I got a couple guided heart things to work on today. So. We're going to be doing a couple different mudras. We're going to be doing also tapping. And we're also going to do some humming. Or some light chanting. It doesn't got to be, and you don't got to chant out loud. You could chant within your mind. All right. So first things first is we're going to be learning how to do the reverse breathing, but with tapping. All right. So everyone now, get your left hand, if you can. Place it on top of your heart. Make a circuit. A circuit with your heart. Place your other hand on top of it, if you like, or you can have your other hand on your knee, whatever you like it to be. All right. Now, I'm gonna put my hand on my stomach. So if you're, if you're new to reverse breathing, put your hand on your stomach. All right, so what we're gonna do is inhale to your chest, exhale to your belly. Inhale to your chest, exhale to your belly. This is what it looks like, you inhale, your belly comes in, fill up your chest, you exhale to your belly. So you can kind of feel the rise and fall. You will feel your chest rise on the inhale. Exhale to your belly. You see your belly, your hand move on your belly. So inhale. Exhale. Focus nose or your mouth. Whatever it takes. Just breathe now. All right. Now everyone knows how to do reverse breathing now. 
Now for the tapping. So for the inhales, we're going to be inhaling deep. Exhaling, relax. Pushing our belly out. And we're tapping on our exhales. So while we're exhaling, pushing the air out, we're going to be tapping our heart. And this tapping actually connects to your heartbeat eventually. And now you're actually using the vibrations for your heartbeat to stimulate your whole body. All right. Let's do this heart-centered reverse breathing. Inhale to your chest. Exhale to your belly. Tap. Keep exhaling. Inhale to your chest. Exhale. Tap. Inhale. Inhale, exhale, tap. Inhale, exhale, relax, and keep tapping, tap your heart. Go at your pace for your tapping. Just exhale. Inhale. Put your chest all the way up. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Keep tapping your chest, your heart. Inhale. Exhale. Remember to suck your belly in on your inhale. Inhale, pull the belly in. Exhale, push the belly out and tap. Inhale, belly in. Exhale, tap. Keep exhaling while you're tapping. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, pull your belly in. Exhale, tap. Keep exhaling while you're tapping. Follow it back in with your inhale. Exhale. Sit up, sit up straight. Make sure your spine is aligned. Keep breathing. Inhale, pull your belly in. Exhale, tap. Mm. Inhale, exhale, keep tapping. Exhale and tap. Halfway there. Follow this pattern. You inhale. Pull your chest up, exhale, you tap your chest. Inhale, pull your belly in. Exhale, let your belly out. Tap. You're halfway there. The finish line is very near. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. 
Keep exhaling. Inhale. Exhale. If you feel tingly sensations or your body temperature changing, that's okay. You're in a safe space now. Inhale. Exhale. Extend your exhales. Keep pushing air out. Inhale, suck your belly in. Exhale, let your belly out. Push it out. In tap. Last 10. Let's give it all we got. Fully in. Exhale to your belly. In tap. Pushing that belly out. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. I know your arms might be tired. Keep going. Five. You're almost there. Give it all we got. Four. Three. Two. One. This is the last one. Pull the end. Tap. Hold your breath. Nowhere needed. Push all the air out. Shh. Hold your breath. Push your stomach out. Three, two, one. Recovery breath in. And hold. Suck some more air through your mouth like a straw. Keep holding. Squeeze if you can. And exhale. Be in the stillness that we have cultivated. Feel your heartbeat. Feel the vibrations you cultivated. Imagine your vibrations continuing to tap your heart after you stop. Are no longer tapping your heart. Feel the sensations that you created as your creator. Divine orchestration of your temple clears your mental. Allow your heart to sync with your mind, your heart and your mind are one, never separate, all one, never alone, we are all one, keep breathing, no pauses, feel that vibration that you cultivated, you might feel your hands very tingly from this. to allow this vibration to spread through your whole body. Feel, feel your heartbeat, slow it down.
Just be here in this moment. All right. All right. Everybody undo your legs. We still got some more to go. Stretch out your legs if you like. I need to stretch out my legs a little bit real quick. So just allow your legs stretching. Make sure my charger is charging my phone so you don't have a, a dead phone in class. <laughs> Give me one moment as I find a charger when I continue breathing, class. I'll be right back. All right, I got a charger. Everyone keep staying heart centered. So Andy probably gonna have to clear this out of the, the class. My bad, bro. <laughs> Yeah, don't forget to drink water. Now, if this is the time, perfect time to drink water and recalibrate. We still got some more hard work to go. All right. Let's find ourselves back in the meditation. No pauses between inhalation and exhalation. Breathe in through our nose, out through our mouth. Now the mudra we're gonna be using is the lotus mudra. So now I want your arms. Be like a lotus bud. So I want you to hold it like this, like a closed lotus. Closed lotus bud. We're gonna hold it like this together. So let's first let's rub our hands. Then we're leading the chi pathways within our hands. Inhale, exhale.
Keep going. Inhale. Now, find your lotus, your budding lotus. Find your budding lotus. Place it on your heart. No pauses. We're becoming the lotus, blossoming out the lagoon. Keep breathing. Keep the pace. Let's speed it up. Slow it down. Halfway. No pauses. Good job. You're doing great. Sit up as straight as you can. Deep inhale. Exhale, don't even try. Keep going. Sit up straight, keep breathing. Extend your exhale. No longer. Feel your belly. Your chest. Exhale. Belly. Chest. Exhale. Then your exhale. Doing great. Three more to go. As deep as you can go. Exhale. One. Deeper. Two. Last one. Fold the in. Exhale. Blossoming lotus. Open your hands fully. Blossom the lotus from your heart. Exhale, hold your breath, push the air out, hold your breath, no air needed, keep holding until your body gives you the urge to breathe. If you feel tingling or your body temperature changing, that's okay. You're in a safe space now. In three, two, one. Take a full breath in. Fully blossoming lotus. And hold.
Exhale. Last one, take a deep breath in. Move your lotus all the way up. And let's give this cosmic love out. You give and you receive more cosmic love in return. You're just giving this cosmic love out to the universe. And now the cosmic love will be returned in tenfold. You give good energy, you receive an abundance of good energy back. Just feel. Feel the sensations. Just feel. Have your eyes in a very low gaze. You're not even trying to keep your eyelids open. Breathe into this place. Feel your heart. Breathe into it. Talk to your heart with your mind. I like to say to my heart, let's open up. Allowing the heavenly cosmic energy to flow through us. Tell your heart that you are worthy. Tell your heart that you love your heart. Say this within your mind now. All right, keep breathing into your heart. You should be having your own natural breathing. Now we're going to ask our spirit guide and the beings of the highest oneness and love to be with us now. So say it aloud or say it within your mind. Spirit guides, beings of the highest oneness and love, be with us now. Say it three times. Spirit guide, angels, ancestors, beings of the highest oneness and love, be with us now. Last time. Spirit guides, beings of the highest oneness and love, ancestors, beings of the highest oneness and love, be with us now. We ask for you to open up our heart to experience a love that we never felt. A love that is cultivated with each and every breath. Conscious love, with your heart. If you feel tingling or your body temperature changing, that's okay. You're in a safe space now. Smile. Smile to your heart. Keep smiling, keep breathing, no pause between inhalation and exhalation. Sit up straight and smile and breathe into your heart. All right, let's stretch out, stretch out our legs real quick. Eat your nose, wiggle your toes, wiggle your fingers. Wiggle your toes, your fingers. 
circle your neck, connect your breath. All right. Now, we're going to be doing Taurus breathing. All right. We're going to be doing Taurus breathing. And for this Taurus breathing, Taurus breathing is a no pausing. We're not going to pause at all. And inhalation, exhalation. So for Taurus breathing, I want you to know this is very essential. You do not try in your exhale. You let your spirit do it for you. No effort needed by you. So all we're doing for our, our Taurus breathing is focusing on our inhales, making our inhales as conscious as we can. And for the heart center mudra, you're going to be going like this, making a circle or a heart, whichever you prefer, a half heart or a circle. I prefer half heart. Two half hearts. Place it on your heart, just like this. For Taurus breathing, we do not try on our exhales. We let gravity do it for us. No pauses. As soon as your breath feels like it's getting silent, you inhale again. Let your exhales be natural. Let gravity do it for you. No effort needed. Either a circle or a heart, place it on top of your heart. No effort needed, no pauses either. Keep it circular. Active inhale. Exhale, do nothing. Active inhale. Exhale, do nothing. The combination of doing and non-doing. All you focus is on right now is your inhales. You do not try on your exhales right now. Gravity exhales for us. Keep this energy on your heart. Keep going. Put it, place your hands on your heart. Keep breathing. Slowly extend your hands. No pauses. No pauses. Sit up straight. Keep moving your arms out. Get to as far as your arms go and sit here and breathe. Ten more left. Do it all we got on our inhale. No effort for your exhales. Let gravity exhale for you. And smile. Don't forget to smile. Let gravity exhale for us. That's two. Mm. That's three. Keep your hands out. I know it might be intense. 
Keep breathing. Exhale. No effort needed. Four. No effort needed. Keep breathing. Five. Only try on your inhales. Exhales like gravity do it for you. <laughs> Exhale, let source do it for you. Six. Inhale. Seven. Inhale. Eight. Last two. Inhale. Nine. Inhale. Ten. Release your heart. Let the heart spread. Let the love spread throughout your whole body now. Feel. Become aware of your body. From head to toe. Feel the tingly sensations flow. You're in a safe space now. Remember to smile. Close your eyes, smile to your heart, and continue breathing with no pauses. Keeping it circular, keeping it expansive, circulating like a force. <sighs> Follow your inner guidance. There is no special technique. Follow your inner guidance and you will grow. Your body can heal. You are the placebo. Let's love ourselves with each and every breath. Divine love radiates from each and every breath. Infinite intelligence, always healing. Through source, I find infinite possibility. Thank you for having this natural high and getting high and meditating on our own supply. So today we got high off our bodies and off life, and off our breath to decrease our stress. So thrive and live alive, okay? Now you can stretch. Um, Andy, if you like, you can start. Um, can not class. Um, <laughs> I'm turning off the recording. <laughs> Right. Gratitude. I'm happy you got guys got to breathe with me. All love, brother. All love, sis. Yeah, much gratitude to you guys for breathing with me. I, I only showed you a technique and and, then, and there's really no technique. You just follow your inner guidance. You were guided to come to class. That's how inner guidance. You know? Yeah. So if anybody can share what they like the most about today's class.
something that was different to you or interesting to you? If anybody wants to join um, the call, so speak about what they liked or didn't like, or, or what was challenging for them. May not didn't like it, but something that was challenging. Oh, the tingling. I love the tingling. All right. Let's Hey, fam. Hello. Hello, bro. <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. It was like kind of very hard for me in that longer sessions to focus. So in the mid of the of the herd breeding, I, I stopped because I was like, just I, I couldn't focus anymore. And I was like, then I'm just always like, OK, now it's, it's enough. So I don't know. It's, it's yeah. But it's okay. I know that from me. If I do breathwork, I can, I can focus me for like twenty minutes, thirty minutes. Um, uh, it's different. Uh, which technique uh, technique I am practice? But yeah, <laughs> especially with that um, uh, tapping my chest and stuff like that, I was like, oh, you know, like it was like, yeah. I had to f to focus me. Yeah, and a reason why we tap our chest sometimes is we can get a vibration from tapping our chest, and also it occupies your mind. So people don't realize this all the time. So yeah, I like. Did you like that, Luca? Because I, I like you can it, you can focus. What do you say? I I liked it, but uh, yeah, yeah at, the, at the first. First tries, I am like, uh, <laughs> uh, I'm like that. Yeah, the next times it's go it's gonna it's gonna be uh, it's going to be easier, I think. Yeah, it's your first time doing it, so you got to give yourself grace, bro. But yeah, that's that's good. Um, when you challenge your mind in ways like that, you see that oh, my focus, got, I got distracted. I come back, you know. You eventually come back, you know, and that's good that. You experienced that. Oh, I, you 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 became more aware if you didn't realize it, because if you weren't aware, you 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 would realize that you weren't you were you weren't staying focused, and you would just keep going like that. But you came aware and like, oh, I lost my focus. Let me get back to tapping again. Forgot. Um. <laughs> yeah, it was like that. But um, especially the first two practices, I was my that was my my practice for for today uh what's the second uh name? Oh, the lotus the lotus no no the uh, where um we move our body uh oh um the the sufi grind and the ah, cat so cow yeah sufi grind is when we're going like this inhale exhale cat cow is this inhale exhale. that that was the that was that was the first practice the first time I I I, I joined this uh, this breath work, we we did that that too, and that was the time I had the most uh, enlightened moment in breath work. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> Today it was not like that, but yeah, it it, it was one of my favorite uh, practice. But I think the first time we did that uh, that practice, I I I don't know, three months ago, we. Combine that with alkaline breathing. Is that possible? Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. okay. Inhale, exhale. <sighs> yeah, we did. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you can do that on your own too, bro, if you would like. Um, the thing is about breath work, once you learn a new style, you can start implementing your own techniques and stuff like that. I just teach you different ways that you could do it. And that's the unique thing about meditation and breath work. You can mix and match and all types of breath styles, you know? Like now you might start tapping more. It might help yeah. you. Yeah, we, we talked about it before, but I don't know. I like to have a guidance 
when, while I'm doing it. So I, the, the most sure. time I'm, uh, I'm practicing, I'm looking like have a YouTube video next to it. Uh, yeah. What, yeah, it's for, for, for the moment. It's, um, yeah. It's be- it's it's feeling better for me. <laughs> yeah, and that's great. Um, I would say like, yeah, just keep going, bro, and eventually you're gonna be guiding yourself. Trust me. Eventually, I mean, <laughs> sometimes sometimes you still always come back to a certain guided video because you just love that video so much or something. But honestly, you're gonna definitely be like, oh, I like this breast style. Let me start doing this more. And it's all about getting your natural high, fam. So get high off your own supply and. Let's get high and meditate, bro. Yes, sir. So, yeah, <laughs> thank you for this session again. I I love it. And, yeah. Yeah, I got, some, I got some more heat coming for you guys, too. All right. Anyone else want to talk? I really enjoyed it I enjoyed oh sorry. I enjoyed the breath work, but I kinda wish I arrived sooner though. I mean we're gonna have this class recorded, Miguel, so no no worries, bro. You're gonna be able to tap in anytime you want to. Yeah, yeah I was just too busy making some food. Yeah. So. What are you making? Uh I just made some pasta with um Broccoli and peas. Okay. I, you've been liking eating lighter? Yeah. Well, kind of. I'm not that bloated right now, so that's good. Yeah. Yeah, at the beginning yeah. of my journey, I used to eat a lot of... Um, I would eat a lot of different types of, like, chickpea pasta with just marinara. Or like just tomato sauce and but eventually I stopped liking pasta personally. Started eating a lot more yeah. a lot more like like vegetables and nuts and fruit. And then I started eating yeah. more. Yeah, I kinda enjoyed it though. I feel like it'll be more effective as a soup since I added a bit of like almond milk and just mixed it and blended. Yeah, you gotta just experiment with this stuff, you know. See how you like it. Oh, and yeah. I know. I feel much lighter when I eat. I I haven't ate meat in a long time, and I don't think I'm ever gonna go back either, honestly. And all I say, if you ever thinking about changing to a non meat diet, I mean not diet. We don't we don't do diets around here. We do lifestyle changes. Diet is di- die and then tea. I'm not I'm not endorsing diet. I'm endorsing life. So, yeah, if um, anyone wants to start incorporating more vegetables and more plant-based and fruit lifestyles, it, blood type doesn't matter, Luca, um, because at the end of the day, our blood type can change. All this stuff is changeable. People don't like to hear that all the time, but these are very much things that we can change with our lifestyle. Yeah. Like, um, right now, I'm kind of craving, like... Oh, my bad, Miguel. What'd you say? Sorry. Uh, I was just going to say, like, I'm kind of craving meat sometimes. Yeah. And honestly, I can say that's... um, Our bodies definitely contain different types of parasites, depending on how you live. And those parasites is trying to get you to crave meat. Yeah, and some... And crave... Um, process yeah, and a food. bunch of junk food. Yeah, it's junk. It's really it's mainly junk food, and um, salt. Oh my, God. salt! Don't get me started. But um, yeah, blood type doesn't matter when it comes. Oh, I don't like salt. Blood, yeah, blood type does not matter when it comes to salt. Honestly, it actually it shows me that um, people like in the medical industry and stuff like that, they say like blood type this, blood type that. Honestly, you should be working out a lot and you should be working out a lot. Eat, eating when you feel full, you stop eating and you don't eat until you actually feel hungry. And when you actually know you're hungry, if somebody offered you the most bland vegetable or something, you'll be like, oh, I will eat it. That's how you know you're hungry. 
Other than that, you're not probably hungry. So this is how you know for your fast, right? To break your fast. If someone will offer you a raw thing of cauliflower, um, a raw thing of broccoli, not cooked, not seasoned or anything, is raw. If someone will offer you green beans, no seasoning, no nothing, and you be like, I'll eat it right now. That's how you know you're hungry. Something that you don't like so much. If someone were to offer it to you in the midst of you actually trying to figure out if you're hungry, and you be like, yeah, I'll eat it. That's how you know you're hungry. We're, we're so used to having instant gratification towards our foods and everything like that. And, and people get caught up in the, oh, yeah, I have this blood type. I have that blood type. Fasting is um, blood type friendly, user friendly, and it always works because, again, it doesn't matter what you eat to me. I honestly think it's how frequently you eat anything. So, yeah, we know fruits and vegetables might be lighter than meat, okay, but it's all in the day still food. And the more you eat, the more you somewhat demand on other Mother Nature's supply when she gave you all you need right here but we forgot that and that's okay so we got to build that back up so and any tips for fasting i'm gonna recommend everyone i could type it in the chat for any fasting tips is trusting yourself you gotta trust yourself trusting yourself yourself um what else and resting you gotta rest trusting resting staying happy or keeping a positive mindset And keep yourself busy. If you don't realize it, um, most of the time we think about food, we don't got nothing else to do sometimes. Sometimes you're actually truly hungry. Most of the time you're not. And it's parasites controlling that. Only way you can combat these parasites is by eating parasite killer foods or fasting them away and meditating them away. Because parasites are connected to emotion. And imagine this. When you get a craving for food and you don't get it, you get pissed. Parasite, bro. Parasite. Oh, that's what I'm dealing with sometimes. Parasite, you're cleansing them out. And emotions do come yeah, up. Just... Yeah. Wait, I want to hear that. Emotions do come up on fasts. So when you fast and you don't eat anything for a day or so, emotions will come up. Trust me when I say. I have broke down before after two days or three days with no food and just drinking water. I have broke down. I remember breaking down on, I, went, I, went, I was doing a 40 day fast attempt and I, only, I got today, I got today 11 before I broke my fast. But day nine, trust me, I broke down. I literally had to, I realized this on fast that your natural high can help you feel fed and you'll thrive. So my natural, this is my mantra I was saying as well. My natural high keeps me alive and I thrive. So honestly, you're, you will have emotions being purged on fast. When you're fasting, you're literally feeding off source energy directly. You're, you're literally having a connection to God, source, whatever you want to call it. You're literally making a direct connection and it's purging you of impurities, like emotions and stuff that you haven't dealt with from a while ago, pain that you might not have dealt with. And people don't know this, but I'm going to talk about this more. I might even host a class about it. But fasting can give you detox symptoms. Yes, it can. So this is what I mean. Um, for say I ate something not too good. I ate some really bad junk food, right? It doesn't affect me. Um, those couple days I ate the junk food, right? 
but I decided to go fast the week later, right? On that fast, I might have symptoms that look like I'm sick. But guess what? I know I'm not sick. I know my body is infinitely intelligent and it's healing me. Sickness stimulates health. Only way you can actually get better is for you to feel sick. And people can't realize that all the time. But once you start feeling better more, you get less sick. But you got to go through the sickness. So if you had a disease or whatever like that and you use a medication to suppress your disease, by the time that you stop taking the medication, your symptoms come back. And that's your body trying to heal itself. But you got to start incorporating different practices to help and assist that. You got to show your body that you want to heal. So just take the, just take heed of that and just remember that sickness stimulates health. So if you ever had a sore nose or sore throat, drink tea, but you remember, oh, my body only does this in a reaction to me trying to feel better. So if you ever got on a fast and you say, yo, why am my nose running more like I'm sick? You're not actually sick. Your body's trying to heal itself in all forms. Wait, do you even eat junk for sometimes? No, my my junk food now is like things that people wouldn't consider junk food, but I'm still I'm dealing I'm on the path of food freedom, Miguel. So personally, sometimes I eat certain foods or I overeat and I kinda get disappointed in myself, but I know it's a journey, so I can't keep getting disappointed in myself. Yeah. yeah I, I think I'm just, just gonna take it. What do you say? I think I'm just going to take it slow. Yeah, just take it slow. Um, you don't want to rush into it, but also you want to enjoy the process, you know? For me, I started wanting to eat, like, more dates, more nature's candies. Um, I, I love dates. I like making my own date chocolates. Um, I, I still use um, maple syrup, honey. I actually... Yeah, I use honey a lot now, raw honey. And I use nature's candy, so I might put honey on my dates or honey on, on my own, um, not dates, but honey on my walnuts, maple syrup on my walnuts, cinnamon or chocolate, and that'll be something I eat. And it's really, it's like nature's candy to me. And yeah, those are the type of sweets I eat. I don't eat, um, uh, gummy bears or none of that stuff no more. I used to when I was younger, but I seen that it bubbles up your guts and then now you have to work your way to get this stuff out of you. But yeah, um, I definitely can do a class on fasting. I would love to do it. Yeah. I don't think I want to do fasting where I don't eat anything. What'd you say? I don't think I'll... I don't want to do a fasting where I don't eat anything. Yeah, that's 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 for you, Miguel. Um, Maybe one day you will, but honestly, if, yeah, you, don't feel, if, you, if you don't feel it's, for, it's good for you right now, then you don't need to do it. I mean, that's just for people that want to really cl- deeply cleanse their body, dry fast, which is when you don't eat anything. And I'm an advocate for it. Um, dry fasting for a day or something like if you never did it before one day will not kill you you know that right everyone should yes. know that one day of not eating will not kill you it won't and especially if you're doing the protocol the fasting protocol I'm gonna, sh- I'm gonna see if I can pin this or something can I pin this what's the fasting protocol fasting protocol is trusting yourself resting Staying happy and keeping a positive mindset and keeping yourself busy. Got it. I'm a dang. Yeah. I've been I've been trying to fast for three days. So what kind of fast, Miguel? Intermediate? Uh like the fast where I only just eat dinner. Yeah, and it's an intermediate fast. It's good. Okay, that that three days out of the week. Yeah, it's great. 
honestly, that's good, bro. Um, that just gives you discipline. Now watch one day, maybe not this week, maybe a couple weeks from now, you're going to be like, I can do one day not eating. And I bet the next time you eat, you're going to be so grateful for your food. Like that one day you didn't eat a thing. And you're like, I just survived a day of not eating. Wow. I'm so powerful. Mm. Yeah. I'm thinking of like kind of eating junk food, but like barely. Yeah, for me, honestly, I just know too much about this stuff. And it's, it'd be like I'm poisoning myself and I can't do it. I mean, that's for me personally. Some people say that you yeah, got to experience just... life's um, enjoyment and stuff like that through food and stuff like that. But I just know for my journey right now, I enjoyed the junk food and everything while I had it. It just now I'm like, I can't eat that stuff anymore and be conscious. Of it. it is going to hurt me. It is it's going to hurt my mind that I'm going to eat it. And then I'm gonna, like, like, oh, my gosh, my stomach hurts. So. I don't, yeah, I don't just wanna, on like I'm, special occasions. See. Even even with that, like sometimes when I do do that, I get on myself like, why did I just? But I can't do that no more for me personally. I have to be on top of it because I really have to. I know for my journey, I cannot be one of the people that preach about um, eating healthy and eating healthy snacks. And then you're going to see me eat a bag of Doritos or something. Uh, uh, That's not me. I can't do that. I have to practice what I preach. And I can't recommend things to people that I'm not doing myself. And I will never do that. So everything that I teach and everything that I do, I personally do myself. I didn't just hear this stuff and just say that I actually experimented and do it in my life. Yeah. Uh, I think of that, actually. Yeah, I just noticed that a lot of people tell people things that they don't actually experience. So, like, I drink a lot of distilled water. And I can show you guys what distilled water is. Um, distilled water. And distilled water is water that has been um, boiled and distilled. So put fire to it and they catch all the steam and the steam turns into the water. And that's probably the most purest water that's around. Besides water from an actual spring. So that means you went to a spring and got spring water or went to a well and got that type of clean water from that itself. Other than that, you're probably drinking filtered tap water. But some people think that distilled water takes your minerals and that's not true. It cleanses your body out to a high level. So it's like pure water, pure water. And all those alkaline waters and stuff, they're literally filtered tap water. <clears throat> and that's that for me, that was a major blind spot for me. So I'm just dropping sauce right now uh, at this point. So, yeah, I'm just dropping sauce. Um, Salt. Salt is a big one. I'm about to post this, so I'm probably going to post this today, but I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek. Before I post, we could talk about it too if anybody has questions. I'm sorry, I edited it. This is not the post, but. This is not the post that I made. I edited it, I made it look even better. But this is like where I started from, my idea about salt. So salt, oh my. We do not need salt. And if we if we do need if we do use salt, we don't need as much as we eat on a daily basis. I swear to God. We don't need any of that stuff. But honestly, people put too much salt in our bodies, and this is why you're so stiff every day. And um salt dehydrates your body. And how you know that's true? If, if it didn't dehydrate your body, ocean water would be completely safe to just drink on a daily basis. And it's not. It actually dehydrates you. And people say, oh, put salt in your water. No, no, no. You're putting sediment and rocks in your water. Salt is coming from a rock. Sea salt is literally bones and minerals of this, the ocean and animals that you're eating. 
That's the salt. So not to say it's not good in different alchemy and elixirs and stuff like that, but honestly, if you're putting it on top of your food all the time, no, your, your body's stiff. And it kind of over it, it saturates your taste buds. So now when you stop eating as much salt, you think your food is bland. You can use herbs and everything, and you still think your food is bland. No, no, no. Your, your food is seasoned up to perfection. The salt has distorted your, your taste buds. And now you think food is not savory or good if it doesn't have salt in it. And I'm actually going to share something with you guys as well. Um, if, matter of fact, I'm going to share my screen. All right. I did not know there was that many salt. Yeah, it's multiple different types of salt. All right. Yeah, so, I only know like sea salt and regular salt. Yeah, there's so many different types of rocks that we eat. Salt to me is the rocks of the earth. All right. Mm. And there's, I'm not saying this, but it definitely is a blind spot that can eventually kill you. So I'm just making you aware of this stuff. That's why I say stop assaulting your cells. Assaulting. If you get it. All right. Um, the power of salt. And they tell us the first thing to do. And, and do you know, in certain ceremony, plant medicine and ayahuasca ceremony, do you know they tell you you can't eat salt? Why is that? They tell you you're not, you cannot eat salt before you take ayahuasca or you're doing these plant medicines. But people still do it anyway. But they tell you this stuff because it actually deteriorating you from the inside out. The fat, the salt fact has been around for a long time. Even though they do have to be well, the hazard of salt is no well kept secret. Therefore, it's all of our own fault, of our own ignorance to to the harm of sodium chloride use. But our subconsciousness has tricked us into thinking <clears throat> that if we never pick up table salt, <clears throat> we are paying enough attention to the salt in our diet in actuality. We are totally unaware of how salted the standard American diet is and just how damaging just how damaging a steady diet of salted food can do. Furthermore, we have no idea whatsoever well-planned, sensible, viable, even attractable alternative to the American standard, the standard American food supply. And it's, and it's all salt-free glory is being practiced on tens of thousands of Americans today. These members are a movement of the natural hygiene revolution and super la laxative alternative health care. If you practice this, you will not only be salt free, but you will be restored. You see what he's saying? And this is someone that really discovered a lot of different things about salt, but a very famous person that I'm, I mean, he, got, he was famous, but they took him out the medical field because he's a doctor saying, so some doctors find out all this stuff that they've been learning is bull crap. And they eventually leave the medical industry and start talking the truth. All right. I'm most likely not going to stop eating salt. All right. Yeah, as bro, bro I would say that's a good thing. Natural hygiene holds that uh, natural hygiene holds holds that health is a natural state of living organisms of li natural state normal state <laughs> I say, normal state of living organisms and the health is maintained through natural and self initiating and self healing 
So basically, he just said your body can heal itself. The basic tenets of hygiene, your body can heal itself. Natural hygiene it holds that the most cause of disease is toxic saturation. So this is what he's saying. You're, you're literally putting toxic things in your body that's stopping your body from healing itself. So you think this stuff is good for us. So every time we eat, it could be a vegan meal or something, right? But you put so much salt in it. Now that vegan meal could still do damage to you. So when you eat fruits or salads and stuff that you're not putting salt into you, those are the things that's healing you. I do want to show you something else. Okay. Endogenous tox toxins from. All right. Endogenous means within the body. Exogenous means out the body. So endogenous, this means within the body. That's waste in the body. M metabolic waste is ongoing by toxic byproducts at the cellular level. Debris spent. Uh, spent debris on dead cells and cellular activity. So we have dead cells that we shed every day. So everyone, everyone that, that does study medicalness and stuff like that, you know that you do have dead cells that you can shed through, um, what's it called? Um, cellular splitting or something like that. Or like, I forgot the, science, the medical name for it. I'm remembering a second. It's funny though, but... <laughs> Mental distress, you can, toxins from mental distress. You can literally make yourself sick by thinking and feeling and letting emotions, the birds of sadness, make a nest. You cannot let the birds of sadness make a nest in your mind. You control your mind. You have to keep repeating this to yourself and remember that you're in control of your feelings. Physical distress and fatigue. So that means you're not getting enough rest and you're probably not working out your body. So that's physical fatigue and distress. You get distressed when you don't work out your body. All right. 